Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's guest, but let's give a shout out to our partners, Vital Signs Wall of Fame, the Global Community of Women in High School Sports, the Florida Coaches Coalition, and We Coach. You've heard me say many times, and it's true, these are four great organizations. You should really have them in your network. And now, don't hit that fast forward button. Stay with us for the next three minutes. We're going to give our sponsors a shout out. These are all companies that I used as an athletic director or as a coach, and you should be using them too. Here we go. We want to thank Home Campus for their support. Home Campus is the exclusive high school and state association management platform for the podcast. It's also your one-stop platform for scheduling, student-athlete eligibility and clearance, and a whole lot more. As an athletic director, I used Home Campus every single day, and it was just fantastic, and it'll be the same for you. To find out more about how you can join the Home Campus team, go to homecampus.com. That's it, homecampus.com. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to gipper.com, start creating world-class marketing content for your school social media channel. You can do it in seconds on any device, and you don't need any experience. Um. Mention the podcast and you'll get a nice discount. That's gipper.com. Start creating world-class content today on gipper.com. We also want to say thank you to Huddle. Go to huddle.com. Change the way you see the game. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years and it was fantastic. But when I became an athletic director, I made sure that our school was a Huddle school. And our coaches just love the tools that Huddle provided that allowed them to coach our kids at their highest level. At Huddle, we believe in sports and teams believe in Huddle. Join the 8 million users and turn your school into a Huddle school. We want to say thank you to Vital Signs Wall of Fame. You know, if you're looking for a really cool way to display your school record boards for all the teams, for all the events, or your school's Hall of Fame, Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check out their interactive touchscreen video consoles. Vital Signs is on a mission to help you bring your school's legacy to life. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check out their great products. That's vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Hometown is digital ticketing that offers more, more support, more security, more customization. Go to hometownticketing.com. Hometown is here to make the best solution for you. We also want to thank Snap Mobile. Go to snapraise.com. Check out their entire suite of platforms designed to help you do your job better. You've got Snap Store, Snap Manage, Snap Connect. There's also Snap Raise, hands down the best fundraising platform out there. You'll find them all at snapraise.com. Check them out today. We want to thank Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com, schedule a live web demo, and see their scoreboards and their score tables in action. Probably one of the best purchases I ever made was our Sideline Interactive indoor score table. Go to sidelineinteractive.com, check out all their products and all the things that they can do for you. That's sidelineinteractive.com. And we want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. If you're not using a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Go to athleticsurveys.com. They're going to create a custom survey just for your school to let you hear back from the people that really support your program. We already hear from the 2% that want to gripe. Athletic Surveys will connect you with the 2%, but also the 98% that love and support your program. That's a tremendously valuable tool to have when you're talking with a frustrated parent, your principal, or your school board. Go to athleticsurveys.com. Get started today. Athleticsurveys.com. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We're going to Chicago today. And we're not visiting with an athletic director, but we're going to be visiting with somebody who really knows their way around the world of sports. Our guest is Abby Emerson, 
Uh, she's got an incredible athletic background, you know, high school uh, athlete. She was an all American lacrosse player at Notre Dame. Uh, she was a teacher. She was a coach. She worked in uh, public relations, just a ton of stuff. She's also the founder of an organization called K-12 Sports Tech. And we're going to hear about that and, and more. But Abby Emerson, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Well, uh, we're excited to hear from you. Uh, we were talking during the break. You and I connected uh, on LinkedIn through some technology posts. And <laughs> Tech Tuesday is one of our regular features. And, uh, you know, you very politely informed me that, uh, you know, you <laughs> coined that term many years ago, uh, which is great. And it's such a great term. I had to steal it in true athletic <laughs> director fashion. But uh, let's go and jump right in. We always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So, Give us that quick bio, where you were born, where you grew up. Uh, maybe take us up to those uh, uh, Notre Dame years, uh, and then we'll take our first break. But uh, what's the Abby Emerson origin story? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, uh, I grew up in uh, Westchester, New York. So Dobbs Ferry first, and then Briarcliff Manor. Um, went to uh, some small schools. Uh, loved sports right away, um, was a three sport um, varsity athlete, which I'm so sad. That's a rare thing these days because of club sports, but we'll get into that later. Right. Um, <laughs> but soccer, basketball and lacrosse were my sports. Um, so, uh, lacrosse is probably my fifth favorite sport. Uh, ended up playing it in college, though, because I happened to be um, better at it. And uh, it was an emerging program at Notre Dame. So um, ended up walking, uh, being a preferred walk on at, at Notre Dame. Um, and uh, it was, you know, a way to get into a school that I absolutely loved and, and watched growing up. And um, had an amazing experience there, uh, have a bond with teammates that, um, still persist to this day. Uh, we tried to do an annual reunion trip with my teammates. Um, but yeah, it was really amazing experience. My senior year, we were, um, uh, number two in the country for the first, a little bit more than the first half of this. Well, in the middle of the season, we got there. We were ten and zero, uh, and and then then we lost it. We lost to Northwestern in the quarterfinals, and of course, you know, Northwestern lacrosse went on to um, dominate for a period of years. Not bitter about it at all. Um, but uh, but yeah, that was that was it. You know, after graduation, it was. Um, I think a lot of collegiate athletes feel this, where there's this this, what do I do? Who am I now? If I'm not a Notre Dame lacrosse player. Um, and, uh, so I had a bit of a windy path to where I am today. Um, and I wouldn't change anything, but it's, it's been a, a bit of a journey. Yeah. We're going to get into that journey, but I want to go back to, uh, your high school days, uh, just for a moment. Um, and then we'll sure. hit on college too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously I'm much older than you, but it, when you were in high school, you mentioned you're a three sport athlete. Certainly that's how it was a hundred years ago when I was in high school. Yeah. Um, did any of your coaches, you know, you mentioned soccer, basketball, and lacrosse. Did any of your coaches, you know, say, you know, Hey Abby, you know, why don't you skip, you know, this sport and, uh, you know, play with us year round or join this club or something. Was that even a thing for you? Oh, no, it wasn't. It was, uh, you know, it was encouraged to, and it was celebrated by the staff and the administration. Um, and, and it was made possible. There weren't any outside influences that were, you know, in the, in the club space that were saying, listen, you have to do this if you're going to play, uh, at a, at a collegiate level. And, um, I mean, to be honest, the, the other side of that is that it was a pretty small school um, and uh, the world of recruiting for college sports was very different than it, than it is today. Um, you know, I sort of charted my own path and figured it out on my own, whereas today there's a ton of resources. And, and I also got very, very fortunate. For example, the Notre Dame lacrosse coach 
um, saw me play at a tournament in, um, mm -hmm. in Port Lidge, New Hampshire, uh, Long Island. So like, you know, it, <laughs> the stars were like, you know, I got, I got very lucky and, um, but no, there was no, there was no pressure to not play one sport. Um, let's talk about lacrosse for a second. Um, you know, for myself, I grew up in Oregon and Washington, uh, again, a long time ago, and I don't even know if lacrosse has made it out there yet, but, uh, I'm going to yeah. guess lacrosse was pretty much just a regular sport in, in New York where you were growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you mentioned that collegiately it, it was a rising sport. So yeah. that was pr pretty impressive for your team to have that type of success. And let's face it for you as an individual to become an all American, uh, you know, that, that had to be, you know, you know, pretty gratifying. It, it was, it was, uh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears. Um, and you know, we, we had this sort of my, the, my fellow teammates the and the rising seniors, um, that, you know, we were all the same class, um, after our junior year and a little bit during, um, it, we had a really tough junior year, um, for a variety of reasons, uh, and didn't see a lot of success. There was a lot of, um, uh, mental health, you know, uh, struggles, um, and without diving deep into, into our junior year, but really we came, uh, you know, my class, um, came out of it saying, you know, if we, we want to make our senior year amazing, we want to put all that behind us. We want to, we want to just stay positive. We want to work hard and we want to work together. Um, and we just had this kind of mindset that I think, um, sort of filtered down to the rest of the, the team and, um, you know, and just went on this like amazing positivity train <laughs> and uh, just sort of willed it <laughs> to happen. Um, we were not really, um, you know, not very well known at the time. When I was a freshman, um, you know, I don't think that we, we weren't ranked. Um, it wasn't until my junior year that we were. Um, and so, you know, we had the high expectations and then uh, we didn't meet them. Um, and, uh, and so we wanted to, we, you know, we had something to prove our senior year for sure. Well, and again, that's great that it, it you had those struggles, but it, it came together with a pretty memorable, uh, and rewarding senior year. I got one more question for you. Then we're going to take our first break. Um, yeah. looking back now at your college days and we we ask this very frequently of our our guests who were women athletes um back in the day let's say mm -hmm. um what was your perception at the time your awareness in regards to um you know was it a quality experience from a title nine perspective not just the minimum but you know were you guys treated as we would expect uh, a women's team to be treated? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and very, uh, my answer is, um, the, <laughs> I would say overall, um, I felt very supported as a, as a female athlete at Notre Dame. Um, I will say, you know, we got the boys soccer hand-me-downs for our, you know, our practice gear, my freshman year, like you know, there's, there are things that, you know, I, I that were, didn't seem so great at the time. Um, but I think at the time though, just, I was so honored and excited to be a Notre Dame athlete. Um, you know, we got a ton of issue gear. We, you know, we, 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 we didn't, <laughs> we weren't, busing 10 hours to places for our games. And, and, you know, so, um, I, I felt very supported in that way. And I, 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 the opportunity was not lost on me. I think nowadays it's, it's, uh, it's improved quite a bit since then. Um, of course they built a lacrosse stadium like a few years after we left. So that has nothing to do with, with title nine, but it still makes me very, <laughs> 
bitter. So I'm like, oh, you're welcome. Uh, That's right. <laughs> yeah. the lacrosse players now. Uh, but no, I, I, I overall, I, I, I felt very supported. Now I, I will say that, you know, when it came to concerns and, and, um, questions and issues that the team brought up, uh, about the program, um, I, they were not given, I don't think quite as much weight as, um, as the other teams. Right. Now we have Notre Dame football and like, there's no, like, I can't expect the same, True. um, because, but we were sort of told, um, like, you know, this is women's lacrosse. It's, it's an emerging program. <laughs> so yeah, but overall it was great. All right. Well, again, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. I, I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you did have, you know, good experience, you know, can it get better? Absolutely. You know, we need to continue right. to get better. For listeners, uh, our guest today is Abby Emerson, as you just heard, an outstanding high school college athlete, uh, now the founder of K-12 Sports Tech. We're going to hear more about that later in the podcast, but let's take our first break. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Home Campus for their support. Home Campus is the exclusive high school and state association management platform for the podcast. It's also your one-stop platform for things like scheduling, student-athlete eligibility and clearance, uh, coaches clearance, and a whole lot more. As an athletic director, I used Home Campus every single day, and it was just great, and it'll be great for you too. To find out more, all you have to do is go to homecampus.com. That's homecampus.com. Check them out today. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest is Abby Emerson. She's been involved with athletics for a very long time. Currently, she uh, found she's the founder and uh, owner of K-12 Sports Tech. I'll get it out, K-12 Sports <laughs> Tech. But that's more recent. Um, Abby, you alluded to uh, starting that journey that I think all of us began after college. So uh, take us through those early years, uh, including some of the different organizations that you worked with. Yeah, no, happy to. Um, yeah, it was very, very windy path for sure. Um, after graduation, um, went back to New York, uh, but again, live in the burbs. I'm, i but I worked in um, in the city. I worked for the New York City Olympic bid, uh, actually, which was the 2012 bid. So I'm dating myself a bit. But um, I worked in domestic communications for for the bid, and uh, that was an incredible experience. Um, you know, met different Olympians. My favorite um, work part of the story was was um, writing. Um, they allowed me to write some quotes from, um, by Muhammad Ali. So that was awesome. And then some press releases and stuff. And, uh, and it was all about, you know, combining the energy and the excitement and the, the, um, at New York city with the Olympics and, and what an amazing, um, experience that would be. And, and, you know, it, it was really fascinating. I mean, politics, athletes, you know, uh, the city, the, the urban planning, I mean, tons of, of, uh, information and, and experiences that, um, were pretty amazing, but it was short-lived. We lost the bid as you know, you may know. Um, and, uh, then I, I worked in the sports networking group for Ketchum, um, in, uh, in Manhattan and, uh, absolutely hated it. Uh, it was a nightmare. I, I, um, I, you know, it was, I think I was there for five months and, um, you know, nothing, it wasn't any one particular person. It was just, I looked at the, you know, in five years, you know, you asked yourself that question, where do I see myself in five years in this company? And there was no right answer for me. I don't want to be here. Um, and, uh, so I did a, a, a complete 180 from the corporate world and I, I um, started coaching lacrosse um, at a high school, at School of the Holy Child in, um, in Rye, uh, New York. 
And uh, from there, I coached a season and then um, I came on as a teacher, a seventh grade language arts teacher. Um, and, uh, and I also taught half a class, um, religion as well. Uh, and so that I was able to coach varsity lacrosse and, um, and teach. And I absolutely fell in love with the classroom and the students. It was so fun and enjoyable. And I, I looked forward to work. Um, and I think, you know, I don't think my, <laughs> My story is unique uh, when it comes to frustrations with um, the way things were done and, and you know, some backwards policies and things that were just, I felt like were cutting, cutting me and the students off at the knees. And, and um, so after three years, uh, I did another 180. So I'll stop <laughs> there. And I got married and I moved to Chicago and, uh, and was unemployed for, you know, a month and a half. Uh, so, but I did really, really love my, my time coaching, especially, um, it was, it was really enjoyable. Well, uh, I, again, we, we hear this quite a bit. Uh, I mean, as I was, you know, in high school and college, I, I wasn't telling myself, well, oh, I'm going to be a teacher. I'm going to be a coach, but I was very fortunate. I had great teachers and great coaches and just I think in the back of my mind thought that they were kind of cool and, and that would be a cool thing to do. Um, you know, I, I like to joke, um, you know, injuries and a lack of talent kept me out of the NFL. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was very easy for me to uh, say, well, geez, I like to coach, um, yeah, do yeah. that for the next 41 years, including being an AD. But we hear a lot of stories like yours. They had no plans to be a teacher or a coach. Uh, did that ever enter your mind when you're in high school or college that you might end up being a teacher or a coach? Hmm. No, no, not really. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed, um, I think I, I do have a, a, like a bit of an inclination, a, a bit of a like teaching um, disposition. I don't know. I, I, uh, I like to lecture people. No, I, I just, I, uh, I'm, I, I am drawn to that. Um, but I, I did, I, I did not think that it would be, um, part of my, my professional journey. I really didn't. Um, I was, I was a graph design major, uh, at Notre Dame uh, as well, which was sort of like an afterthought. I was like, yeah, sure. Graph design. So for those of you, <laughs> if, if any high school students or like current college students are listening, take more time deciding on your major. because <laughs> It does make a difference. Um, Boy, let me write that one down. That that's, uh, that, that's very important. Uh, all right. You mentioned, you know, you, you didn't like the, the advertising gig. Uh, you met some guy, you got married, you moved to Chicago. Okay. Um, let's talk about some of your entrepreneurial, uh, efforts. Uh, you know, take us on that next chapter. Well, that's, it's funny you mentioned that. So the entrepreneurial, um, side of me is another reason why I left teaching. Um, I, I felt, um, there wasn't a lot of space in that, in that time. And in that place, um, for me to really satisfy that itch that I had to create something to make a huge dramatic impact on a, on a business. Um, and that sort of drove my career path from then on. So I went into sales, um, in commercial real estate, um, in a, in a city that I, had never lived in before. Um, so interesting choice in hindsight. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I was a tenant rep broker. Um, and, uh, then I went to staffing, um, to help connect people with jobs that, um, were a good fit for them. Um, to be, totally honest. I wanted to have children and I needed a job. I was going to give me maternity leave. So <laughs> that was, that was like a huge part of the calculus for that role. Um, and then I did some freelance copywriting and design. Uh, and that's where I met. Uh, and I was part of a Notre Dame, uh, it was called, um, 
uh, Irish entrepreneurs and I did some networking, uh, the, the basement of St. Peter's church in Chicago. Um, and, uh, the then CEO of, um, eight to 18 was there doing the same thing and passing himself off as a Notre Dame grad. I didn't find out at the time that he wasn't, uh, that he was just there for <laughs> networking reasons. Um, but, uh, met him, told him a little bit of my story and, and that I was, I just had my first daughter. Um, and I ended up working part-time in market development for eight to 18, which really meant, you know, eight to 18 was, is, was, and is, but they're part of snap now, um, a scheduling and registration provider for high school athletics. And, um, but there was an apparel, partnership, potential partnership that was in the works. And my role was to come in and it was market development. It was to kind of pioneer this new direction to try to um, create a solution using tech and, and our relationships with our athletic directors in our schools to create something that was exciting and, and more streamlined and, and uh, you know, better for the, the coaches and the, the teams and the parents, uh, easier experience. So that was that was in 2012. So um, technology has come a long way since then, but it was exciting to be, you know, and that sort of was kind of the beginning of this, this urge to create solutions um, and work with, collaborate with, with different parties to, to create something that was fun and effective for athletic departments. Right. And, you know, you mentioned uh, 8 to 18 is now, uh, you know, part of the the SNAP mobile uh, empire, which uh, SNAP's one of our sponsors. So uh, um, as you were, when you were working for 8 to 18, um, were there things kicking around in your head that, you know, hey, I, I think I can do something different or do something better awesome. or, you know, did eight to 18 go to snap and now you're, you're back in that situation where I need to find a job. How, how did that all play out? Uh, well, there's a, a couple big moments in, in the eight to 18 story. Um, uh, that the, the CEO that I met at the basement of St. Peter's, um, and, and who recruited me to join, uh, eight to 18 was, um, uh, arrested and convicted of homicide. Um, so that happened, uh, that through a bit of a, uh, wrench in, in, in the eight to 18 path and trajectory. So I ended up being part of a, a core team, um, that were, that was kept on to sort of, you know, rebuild, Right. Uh, from the damage that 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 had caused, um, we had, uh, but at the time, you know, Kim Johnson, who is now with uh, Snap, um, was hugely vital in that. I mean, she had these great relationships with these athletic directors. Many of them were just asking her how she's doing. You know, regardless of of you know caring less about how it, what it means for, for them and for their department. It was like, how are you, Kim? How's it, you know? So, you know, we had, we had a great um, group of athletic directors and I've, I've found that over the years, you know, it's, it's with all of the responsibilities that athletic directors have and, and, and all of the, you know, challenges and of, of being on the vendor side and, and serving athletic departments. Um, there's no more loyal and, and understanding group. Um, in my experience, I haven't, you know, <laughs> uh, so, but the, nothing was more telling than that. You know, we, we, we lost very few customers. Um, they were with us through, you know, through that, that moment. Um, but I think, uh, but yes, coming back to kind of <laughs> my personal journey with that, it was, it, it ended up being a way for me to make my voice heard and to be part of shaping the, the newer trajectory of the company. Um, and so I got much more involved in, in strategy and partnerships and opening up other lines of revenue, um, helping uh, with 
communication with the the athletic departments and and helping them, you know, grow revenue and and with fundraising solutions and apparel. So um, it ended up being a pretty pivotal moment for for me and my professional journey. Um, and and you know that led to today. Yeah, well, absolutely. I did not know that uh, little piece of history, and uh, you know, appreciate you sharing it. I, obviously, that was a big moment. Uh, we're going to go and take a break, and when we come back, we've been talking about K twelve sports tech. Um, we're visiting today with Abby Emerson. She's going to share how K twelve sports tech uh, came about and uh, continue with the the Educational Lady Podcast. So uh, please stay with us. We'll be back in just a minute. We want to say thanks to Gipper for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Go to Gipper.com. Their team is going to help you to create world-class marketing content for your school's social media channel. You can do it in seconds on any device, and you really don't need any design training. It's so easy. Even I can do it. Your kids are on social media, and if you're not creating social media posts, you're really missing out. Go to Gipper.com. Start celebrating your program, promote your teams and your athletes. Gipper's used and trusted by over 3,000 high schools and colleges across the country. It's professional graphic design made simple. Go to Gipper.com. Mention the podcast. They'll give you a nice discount. That's Gipper.com. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Go to Huddle.com and change the way you see the game. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years, but when I became an athletic director, I made sure that our school was a Huddle school, and our coaches just loved the tools that Huddle provided that allowed them to coach our kids up to their highest level. At Huddle, we believe in sports, and teams believe in Huddle. Join the 8 million users and find out how to turn your school into a Huddle school. We also want to say thank you to Vital Signs Wall of Fame. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. If you're looking for a really cool way to display your school record boards for all your teams, for all the events, or to show off your school's Hall of Fame, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check out their interactive touchscreen video consoles. It's also a great way to share your school's diverse history and your proudest moments. That's vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check them out today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Abby, you kind of took us through those post-college years. You know, you got involved with K-12. Uh, excuse me, I keep saying K-12. Uh, that's later. Uh, 8 to 18. <laughs> you got involved with 8 to 18. Uh, obviously, some events happened, but allowed you to have maybe a bigger role and do some different things. So maybe take us from that point. Um, you know, what was the path with um, uh, the organization that then allowed you to decide, Hey, I'm going to try something different. Yeah. Um, so ended up taking more of a leadership role. Kim and I, um, uh, actually ended up working together. We, we had really complementary strengths and experiences. So Kim was focused on um, uh, sales and product and, and I was much heavier in, in um, partnerships and, and some of the strategy and then marketing communications. So, you know, between the two of us, we were um, it was really exciting. We were able to, to shape a lot of, um, you know, what kind of how eight to 18 evolved. And, and I was able to, um, experiment with, with partners that meet a bunch of vendors in the space, talk to them, learn about their objectives, their challenges, um, and how, and then also dive into the tech piece. How might our solutions work together to provide a better um, tool for athletic departments? So, you know, like increase the value prop, but also, um, you know, it was eight to 18 was like a, <laughs> like a forever startup. Uh, so we were always, we were very scrappy, very nimble. Um, which made for, um, 
you know, this, this flexibility and, and, and adapting as the space grew and evolved. Um, and, uh, so throughout that journey, it was sort of, um, I, I loved creating these solutions and collaborating with vendors and then, then also getting feedback and working with athletic directors. Um, at the time though, I, I always, in the back of my head, I always thought, you know, this is, this seems, um, every other piece of technology out there and every other space has these ways of reviewing vendors and, um, you know, evaluating and, and, and then they have these really heavy support teams and, and it just seemed like the high school sports tech space um, didn't have that at all. You know, you 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 get testimonials from handpicked customers, and um, so it was very hard for new ads, especially, but but even ads that have been in, in it for a while to 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 really vet and and um, understand if if a, a vendor was going to be a really good fit for them, especially long term, and so. Um, that was always in the back of my head. And uh, I ended up leaving um, AT18 to take a COO role for a company called Local Sports Network, which was live streaming and fan engagement uh, for high school sports. Um, worked with Huddle actually. And uh, during that time, because uh, they were a partner of Local Sports Network, found out a lot about live streaming and, and um, uh, fan engagement and, and Huddle. Um, and then uh, I ended up leaving last fall um, to found K-12 Sports Tech. I thought it was kind of now or never. Um, and the, the goal really was to help vendors, help athletic directors and, and, and help sort of bridge the gap between the two and to help athletic directors sort of navigate the emerging, the emerging K-12 Sports Tech space. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the, the origin story of, uh, K-12 sports tech. Yeah. And again, you and I connected recently, uh, because of K-12 sports tech. So since that's what you're doing now, you know, for that athletic director or coach who's listening, you know, what is it and, you know, why should they be reaching out to you? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, you know, my, my goal is to connect athletic directors with technology and solutions that they they need and and um, that'll make make things easier for them, which ultimately helps the student athlete, helps create opportunities for for our student athletes. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's evolved and pivoted since its inception. Um, and what I found is that vendors are really um there's a demand for an understanding of how to work with athletic departments um which is great uh, there's at least some self-awareness on the vendor side like hey you know how do we not only serve athletic departments but engage um and 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 keep them as customers um keep them happy and um and then on the vendor side of course there's how do we create revenue? How do we stay, um, you know, we keep our prices low for schools, but also find other ways of, of generating revenue. And so, um, so that's kind of how it's, it's ebbed and flowed. Um, I also created, um, you know, I just going back to the, 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 no, no opportunity to review vendors. I created an athletic director survey um, a vendor survey for ADs to fill out. Um, and that's one thing that I would encourage every athletic director to take the time to do. Um, because part of my goal and mission is to help drive transparency and accountability in the um, K-12 sports tech space by, by vendors so that there's better fits, there's better experiences for athletic departments and coaching staff and ultimately the student um, so that would be one thing that I would encourage, um, the athletic, athletic directors to do because, um, you know, now's your chance. And then of course, you know, you think of those new ADs coming in, not knowing what tech to use, what's really going to be best for them. And, and it can be such a time suck, as you know, uh, <laughs> 
you know, figuring out training, all this stuff, investing so much time and energy that you don't have as an athletic director into a tool for it to not work or for the coaches not to use it or for the train, you know, the support not to be what you expected. So, um, so it's really this community that I'm trying to help enable and build where athletic directors can give really candid, honest feedback um, so that their fellow athletic directors can benefit, but also so the vendors can really understand where they're, they're doing a wonderful job and, and where they could use some work. Yeah, and that's so important. Uh, th nowadays, there are so many, um, I'll, I'll say, opportunities uh, in a number of different platforms, uh, and many we feature as sponsors on our program. Um, and having, this is my word, not yours, but having, well, I'll say a resource, having a resource yeah. like K-12 uh, Sports Tech that an AD can go to, or as you mentioned, a vendor can go to, uh, it really, I, I think might be a missing piece. So we're going to take another quick break. Uh, but when we come back, we're going to take a deeper dive into K-12 sports tech, maybe talk about some uh, um, different ways that can help ADs. But Abby, we'll do this at the end of the podcast. If one of our listeners wants to reach out, find out more, or just pick your brain a little bit, what's the best way they can get a hold of you? Yeah, uh, well, they can either... Um... They can just email me if they want. Uh, so it's abby at k12sportstech.com. Um, or they can go to the website and um, there's a contact um, uh, page where they can they can just contact and I, I'll reach out or my colleague will reach out. And and yeah, I'm happy to help in any way. I, I that's, that's the part of this that I love. All right. Well, make sure you add that to your network listeners. We're going to take another quick break and then we're going to come back. We're visiting today with Abby Emerson, the founder of K-12 Sports Tech. Uh, please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing for their support of the podcast. Go to hometownticketing.com. Their team is going to show you how to set up and sell your tickets online, but they're also going to provide you with a dedicated client success manager that will give you hands-on support every step of the way. And hometown ticketing is not just for athletic events. You can also use it for um, school plays, concerts, school dances, even graduation. Go to hometownticketing.com. Hometown is digital ticketing that offers more, more support, more security, more customization. Hometown is here to make the best solution for you. We also want to thank our good friends at Snap Mobile. Go to snapraise.com. Check out their entire suite of platforms designed to help you do your job better. If you're looking for a fundraising platform, stop right here. Snap Raise is hands down the best you can use. But you also have Snap Store, Snap Connect, Snap Manage, and a whole lot more. You'll find it all at snapraise.com. And we want to thank Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com, schedule a live web demo to see their scoreboards and their score tables in action. Probably one of the best purchases I ever made was their Sideline Interactive indoor score table. Go to sidelineinteractive.com, schedule that web demo today. That's sidelineinteractive.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Once again, our guest today is Abby Emerson, a tremendous background in athletics and most recently the founder of K-12 Sports Tech. Abby, you gave kind of a, a, an overview of, of what K-12 Sports Tech is and what you're trying to do with athletic directors and vendors. Let's take a little bit of, deeper, of a deeper dive. You know, what are some other things that you're doing right now um, with, let's say, athletic directors and vendors? Yeah, well, um, I mentioned the athletic director, the survey, the review, um, and that's, uh, so vendors, if they want to be part of our high impact vendor program, they actually are required to send that to their customer base, the survey. Um, and what we find is, is that it's a great way for them to get direct feedback uh, but also for um, them to 
find ways in which they're they're really excelling. And then K-12 sports tech um, is able to highlight um, some of those those categories where they're where they're really strong. Um, and so uh, I heard you mention vital signs, they're um, a high impact vendor and they did exactly that. There was a, a very open excitement about getting their customers to um, share. Uh, so that's something that we're we're trying to encourage in the space, um, but that only works with, with uh, athletic directors filling out the survey. Um, the vendor impact initiative is another area, another um, program where we're, um, again, trying to drive transparency in the space. Um, vendors are able to um, sponsor that program. And again, it's trying to get those surveys filled out and, and just, uh, and fill out a vendor questionnaire that asks some questions that, um, we know athletic directors are, are interested in knowing more about, um, when they're making decisions about technology, um, for their department. So, so the high impact vendor initiative is, uh, the high, sorry, the vendor impact initiative is another, um, thing that we're working on. Um, but because of this, you know, pivot to to servicing vendors and to getting them to, um, you know, um, or helping them uh, service or serve athletic departments. Um, we are uh, exploring ways to draw on the expertise uh, and knowledge of athletic directors who are either active or or um, or retired. Uh, and involve them in sort of a, a more formal way in, in consulting to help shape the trajectory of actual tech companies. Um, one of the things that we can see in the space right now, there's tons of consolidation. There's a lot of stuff happening at a very high level. Um, and it seems the more that happens, the more, the wider the disconnect between the vendors and the solutions they're providing and the actual athletics office and, and the coaches. So um, to, you know, that's part of what the vendor impact initiative is, is, is trying to elevate athletic director voices. Um, and then, you know, if we can bring athletic directors into some of the, the work um, for vendors, uh, then everyone, you know, everyone wins. Vendors get the feedback that they need, um, to invest in, in tools and solutions that are really going to help and services and, and support and staff. That's really going to help, uh, these athletic departments and then athletic departments are, are their voices and ADs, their voices are being heard, um, and they are helping, um, shape innovation. So, um, so yeah, those are, those are kind of the big things that we're working on right now. Um, but to be honest on the, you know, involving ADs, I'm, I'm picking brains right now. Um, so reaching out to some people in my network that, uh, have been cheerleaders and, and, and just great people to work, work, work with, um, so far. So, yeah. Well, I, I love the idea of the vendors, you know, connecting with the athletic directors, you know, from, a, I guess, a, you know, what do you think, you know, what's your opinion, uh, you know, trying to do that ahead of the game rather than, oh, here's a product. What do you think? Um, you know, maybe they can save everybody some time by doing that on the front end. Um, you know, there's a million questions I want to ask you, but we're, we're limited with time here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the K-12 Sports Tech, it's a newer company. Um, where do you see yourself, let's say, you know, a year from now, where would you like to be? What are some things you're working on that, you know, they might not be quite there yet, but uh, they're coming down the road. Anything you can share with us? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I would love, uh, you know, to work with, to have a bunch of athletic directors um, as part of the team really, um, in whatever capacity they can, uh, they can be and helping, um, you know, shape the sports tech space for the K-12 sports tech space. Um, so, you know, I'm, that's part of my, my goal. I know that, you know, the national conference is always some fun prep. It, it's, it's, I love the deadline of, of the, you know, the show to like, okay, what do we really, what do, we got to focus on the most important things. 
um, and getting athletic directors excited about, you know, being part of, of shaping the space and, and, uh, you know, giving feedback and, and helping. And again, in a more formal capacity. So I mean, like maybe being properly compensated for their time and, and, uh, effort instead of, you know, giving a lot of informal advice, which athletic directors are notoriously wonderful about there's, they're very open to, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to hear on the vendor side, but it's really, really helpful. Um, and they're, you know, they don't have a lot of time to spare, but, um, when you ask for it, oftentimes they're going to give it to you. So, um, I, I would love to, to kind of formalize a way for them to give feedback and, and, um, and be compensated. Um, and then on the vendor side, you know, just helping, uh, educate, like we, I, I'm, I touched on this at the beginning, but like I have a special place in my heart for high school sports. Um, the club space is like the area where a lot of tech vendors want to go and it's, it's a quicker sale. It's easier. There's more money in it. There's more resources. Um, so I want to help get, uh, make us competitive, like really draw on the things that make high school sports exciting uh and uh you know get those kids back into bring back the three sport athlete right <laughs> that's what i really want yeah, I, I think the needle's moving slowly uh it's certainly not where you know you and i want it but uh, i know our yeah. listeners uh they're definitely of that mind uh abby this has just been great like i said i i, I wish we had a lot more time but uh we're not quite done yet uh we always wrap up with the athletic director's toolbox. Now you're not an AD, but you certainly know your way around the world of athletics. So we're going to take our final break here from athletic surveys who sponsor this segment. And when we come back, I'm going to challenge you to send out a brand new athletic director on their very first job, but I'm only going to let you put three items in their toolbox. So let's hear that uh, final sponsor shout out. And when we come back, we're going to find out what Abby Emerson is going to put in her new athletic director toolbox. We'll be back. We want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for their support and sponsoring the AD Toolbox segment. Athletic Surveys are a quick, easy, and an affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire program. Athletic directors already hear back from the complainers, the 2% that want to gripe about everything. Athletic Surveys will connect you with the 2%, but they'll also connect you with the 98% that support your program and love it. And that's a tremendously valuable tool to have when you're talking with that frustrated parent or your principal or your school board. Go to athleticsurveys.com. They're going to create a custom survey that will allow you to take the pulse of your parents and your student athletes. That's athleticsurveys.com. Check them out today. Well, it's that time of the podcast. We have been visiting with Abby Emerson, um, outstanding uh, high school and college athlete, uh, an entrepreneur, and the founder of K-12 Sports Tech. Uh, she's not an athletic director, but she certainly knows her way around the world of athletics. Right now, I'm going to challenge Abby to send out a brand new AD on their very first job, but I'm only going to let her put three things in that toolbox. So, Abby, what three items are going to go into your new athletic director toolbox. <laughs> well, um, so mine are a little bit more conceptual, <laughs> but I will say the first one has a tangible component. Okay. Number one, um, scheduling and communication tech. Those are, that's the foundation of your, your tech suite um, as a new athletic director. So logistics and communication, that's, you're going to be going back and forth between those two every single day. So um, I'm, I, depending on your school, your personality, your staff, all those, that will help you figure out which vendor to use. Um, and if you have some questions, you can always ask me. Um, but, uh, that foundation of tech is, is really, really important. Um, and I would say when you're deciding on those, make sure that, um, the tools work for you and your department's goals and objectives, um, hand-me-downs 
are not necessarily the right fit for you, um, especially long term. So um, even if it takes a little bit of additional time up front to vet vendors um, and do your research, I would encourage you to, to do that with these two critical tools. That's my, I guess I put two tools in the first tool. <laughs> I like it. It's efficient. <laughs> yes. Um, now the second two, uh, it's more advice around building a tech suite. So, you know, adding tools to your toolbox here are something, here are two things I think to, to keep in mind. Um, keeping your vendors honest and accountable. That's, um, that's a big one. Ask a lot of questions, uh, specifically around support and service. Um, the last thing you want is to be in a situation where you are getting lots of questions from parents and there's no, and you don't, you can't answer those questions. Your vendor, your provider is supposed to, and, and you can't get a hold of them and you can't get answers. Um, so really dig, uh, in on, um, on asking what the support staff, what the support program is, what the staff looks like, you know, what are the best ways of getting in touch? What's the turnaround time for answers? Um, can you send your parents to, um, you know, directly to the vendor? Um, is there a knowledge base? Things like that. So um, that is one thing when you're selecting your tools uh, for your department, that's, that's a really important um, thing to keep in mind. So that's number two, again, conceptual. <laughs> no, it, it makes perfect sense. Um, I can't tell you in the years that I was an athletic director, you know, how many times, you know, Hey, that looks like it's pretty cool. And I ordered it or talked to a, a salesperson and ended up ordering it and you get it and you just go, what the heck is this? This isn't what I wanted. So no, absolutely. You know, vet your vendors. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, and then the last thing, number three, uh, it comes back to communication, but it's with your, your staff, um, c communication, I guess with staff around expectations when it comes to technology. So that is number three, just being crystal clear, putting some basic benchmarks and requirements for tech adoption and use in place early on um, and, and across the board for all your coaches. Um, because I know, I know, I know a lot of athletic directors can relate to this. One of the hardest things in the job is getting the coaches to use the tools and the programs that, you know, that the athletic director or the department or the school put in place. Um, and, you know, you need support again from the vendor in that, you know, what does training look like? What is, you know, how easy is the technology um, to use for my coaches? Uh, you know, it may be easy for you or your assistant to use, but like, what do the coaches tools really look like? Are my, and, and, and figuring out if my staff's going to use them, but again, clearly communicating, because if there's cracks in the foundation, um, where, you know, one or two coaches don't play by the rules, the others gradually are going to follow. And then you're, you know, you're left, you're left with inefficiencies and technology that you're you're not able to optimize and and then the whole program suffers. So I would say the staff expectations on technology um, is a is a big one as well. You you uh, were so polite when you mentioned that. You know we we use the phrase the coach going rogue uh, <laughs> and yes. you know in the coaches meeting. You know we're not going to go rogue. Uh, yeah yeah exactly. I mean I would even like. I know it's it's hard sometimes, but like making it part of the performance evaluation, like tech tech, it has to be used at this point. Like you you have to have coaches that can are going to play ball at least to a certain extent. You know, you can make those those benchmarks and those requirements the the you know the bar pretty low, but like they got it they got to meet you. Mm -hmm. um, and so making that part of performance evaluations, I think is, is more common practice now um, because tech is so important. To, no, to it, program. And it, it's a great point about anything. Uh, and, and for tech, you know, I, I was able the last few years I was an AD before I retired, you know, I, I would have somebody teach me how to do it. Okay. This is how it's done. And so I could tell those, you know, 
young, you know, whippersnapper coaches, hey, <laughs> an old guy like me can do this, you can do it. So right. Right. Abby, this has just been great uh spending time with you and finding out about K-12 sports tech. One more time, if one of our and I'm gonna give a spoiler alert, Abby is gonna be uh at the NADC conference in Orlando. Uh, so you can make plans to visit her booth. Uh, but before then, if one of our listeners wants to reach out, how do they get a hold of you and find out more about K-12 Sports Tech? Uh, well, it's it's been a pleasure, Jake. Thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. Um, and I, I hope I hope helpful. I'm I'm really just excited about this business and about connecting with more athletic directors and, and vendors and, and being part of this crazy K-12 sports tech space. Um, and, uh, but yeah, if anyone wants to get in touch um, and, and uh, you know, I may send you the survey link um, for, for athletic directors that want to um, review their vendors, which would be hugely impactful for what, what we're trying to do at, at K-12. Um, that that would be great. But uh email is 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 fine. Abby at k12 sportstech.com. Um, or you can go to uh the website k12 sportstech.com um and you can fill out a contact form. Um and uh my my colleague Alec, Alec Brown, uh you may hear from him. He's a former AD. He was the um president of Beyond Sports, a nonprofit org for uh, youth sports development um, in Chicago. So um, we've got some other people involved too, but uh, I, I, you'll probably get a personal response from me. So abby at k12sportstech.com. All right, make sure you uh, add that to your list of contacts. Uh, abby, once again, thanks for being on. All the best and uh, definitely looking forward to connecting with you uh, in December at the National Conference. Likewise, Jake. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on. Oh, thank you. For listeners, um, we do this uh, just about every day, and we upload the Zoom recordings to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. Thanks for listening. Come back next time for another great interview. And like I said, just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll see you next time.